Hi, welcome to today's BCAP, BCAP lesson. My name is Jason, and I am one of the children's librarians at the Central Branch of Brooklyn Public Library and one of your regular BCAP educators. Today, we're gonna talk a little bit about street art. Um, you might ask, what is street art? Um, and the most bare bones definition I found was a good one on Wikipedia, and it is, street art is unofficial and independent visual art created in public locations for public visibility. Um, there's a few other types of, of art and public sharing that could fall into this category, but we do see some, um, some differences. Um, street art is typically considered separate from uh, traditional tagging graffiti. Um, it is seen as something a little bit different than public art. Um, but working just from this definition, we can have a, a, a pretty good discussion. Um, my image here is um, a popular one by the artist known as Banksy. Um, Banksy uses stencils and spray paint to quickly put up their work. Um, and they are what's known as a guerrilla artist. And that's guerrilla with a U and an E and not an O, like the monkey. Um, and in this case, it means um, sudden, swift, uh, unexpected Banksy works um, quickly. They go in and, and put up their art without anyone noticing and, and leave so that their, their art wasn't there one minute and is there the next. Um, and they use stencils to make that happen quickly. So we did say that there's a difference between street art and public art. And what is that difference? Um, one of the key factors in uh, calling one thing street art and another public art tends to be um, money. Was it paid for? Um, so we have two examples on this slide. One is uh, Pixel Pour 2.0 by Kello Geller. Um, would be considered street art. Uh, Kello put her installation out um, independently. She just wanted to do it and she is trying to um, explore the relationship between digital reality and physical reality. Um, and so she uses um, cubism and, and pixels to make something uh, kind of blend the two. Um, she used, in this instance, she used her pixel art to make it look like water was coming out of a, a pipe on a building, uh, on a sidewalk in Manhattan. The other, uh, example we have is Kristen Visbal's, uh, Courageous Girl. Um, this was originally thought to be street art because it just kind of popped up overnight and it um, made a very impactful statement because of where it was placed in front of the charging bowl. Um, and it upset the artist for the charging bowl sculpture um, because it changed the statement his piece was making. It has since been moved and we have since learned that uh, there was a corporation that um, um, paid for this art, um, there's a word for it and I'm forgetting it, commissioned this piece. Um, and so since it was paid for, it's considered public art, not independent. Um, someone paid to have it put out. Um, what is the point? Why would, why would someone do street art? Um, frequently, street art is used to make an impactful statement about the society it is both created and viewed in. Um, it can also be a statement in and of itself in the de in demo democratizing art, since not all artists are put in galleries or museums and not all people who want to see art can afford to or get to uh, galleries or museums. Um, the example we have on this page is Marivelle 333's um, mural from the Underhill Walls 
project. The Underhill Wall project is just down the street on Underhill across from the Central Library. Um, there it's on a corner and wraps around. Uh, her piece is a woman of color dressed as a nurse and is kind of striking a heroic pose over the skyline of New York while uh, traditional comic book heroes um, look on and there's kind of a, a red cross beacon in the background rem reminiscent of the bat signal and it's kind of um, calling into mind the current situation we're in with COVID-19 and the novel coronavirus and the uh, heroism of frontline workers putting their lives on the line to keep our city healthy. Um, what, what can street art be? Is it, are, there, are there rules about it? Um, as with all forms of art and all expressions of art, um, the answer is gonna change depending on who you ask. Uh, everyone has their own opinion on what art is and what it can be. Um, but I have compiled some examples of uh, street art that I think make good statements and um, expressions. Um, and they're all in different uh, media. So our first example is your traditional painted mural. Um, this could use spray paint or uh, bucket and brush. Um, I'm not actually sure which application Naturel used, uh, but this is Naturel's um, mural of Harriet Tubman on the 20. Uh, this is found in Washington, DC. Um, and it was a statement about um, representation on our money. There was a discussion a while back about putting different people and different images on our paper money. And uh, there had, was a push at the time to um, put Harriet Tubman on, on a bill. And that's what Naturel did with this piece. Um, I think it's in a parking lot. I actually saw this one and it's, it's beautiful and it's huge. Um, if you stand up next to it, most people only come up to about the bottom of her nose if you're tall. Um, it's really well done. Other, other materials that can be used, other media include uh, chalk. Um, and we'll see a lot of chalk street art in um, bigger cities, and it tends to be more popular in um, high traffic touristy areas because um, most street art is um, intended to be fairly temporary. It'll go up, it'll be seen, it'll have its impact, and it'll either be taken down by the artist or by the community later, or it'll be painted over. And the nature of chalk is inherently temporary and, and drawing on the ground in chalk only lasts until people start walking over it or until it rains. So the use of, of chalk in street art tends to be focused um, to those high traffic areas so people do have the opportunity to see it. This is, um, this is a photo I took about seven years ago in Florence, Italy. I don't remember the name of the person doing the drawing. You can kind of see part of their name there at the bottom right of the image. Um, there was a whole group of people on this street doing chalk recreations of famous uh, paintings, famous works of art. And this is Girl with Pearl Earring done in chalk. Um, another not its own separate media necessarily, but a separate technique is the use of stencils. And we kind of mentioned that, that um, Banksy does that and it is a, a popular one because if you plan ahead and make your stencil at home, you can go out and put your art up quickly. Um, this piece is done by the Mother Monkey Collective in Mexico City or Mexico de Efe. Um, and it is almost kind of a self-portrait, I think. It, it is someone in a hoodie with a can of spray paint standing in front of the wall, painting a message on the wall. And the wall message is in Spanish, but I think it says, um, 
thank you for making our dreams possible. Um, and a lot of times street art will be done by uh, groups um, working together. Another media that can be used is mosaic and a mosaic is putting together small physical items in a pattern so that they create a larger image. Um, this is by the French artist Invader. It is an image of a space invader from uh, the classic arcade game done in looks like ceramic tile on the side of a building. Um, another form that street art can take is textile art or uh, yarn bombing. Yarn bombing is typically done, um, again, in advance, kind of like stencils. You crochet or you knit uh, your piece, and then you go out and quickly put it up and, and leave so that it was kind of the guerrilla style, not there one minute, there another. Um, and it's frequently done um, by groups. I don't know who did this one. Um, it is pink and purple and white uh, crocheted pieces. It looks like they're kind of actually quilted together. Um, so this might be quilt bombing maybe a little bit more than traditional yarn bombing um, to make kind of like a tea cozy for a tank. Um, and it's making a statement to me about, um, about love and compassion and um, taking care of each other over uh, destruction and war. Um, textile arts are currently seen as um, more feminine by those who uh, ascribe activities to the gender binary. And this piece specifically are using traditionally um, feminine colors of pinks and purples and light blues and pastels. Um, so it's making kind of that statement of wrapping a hard, destructive machine in soft, uh, calming colors. Another format of street art is performance art. A lot of times people will forget this one and I almost didn't put it on in our lesson, but I thought it would be a good addition. And it's something that some, a lot of us, especially being in New York, uh, have seen. Um, two, two forms this can take are the living statues. Um, and in my image, these were two men pretending to be bronze statues on a street in London. Um, and if you gave them a donation, they would come to life and interact with you. I gave them a couple of pounds and had me sit between them and, and pretended that they were um, <laughs> robbing me. Um, and then when their interaction is over, they go back to sitting very still or standing very still so that passersby will think that they are a sculpture just sitting on the sidewalk and then are surprised when they move. Um, we see them a lot in Manhattan, um, especially in the touristy places. Uh, the living sculptures, a lot of, some of them will pretend to be robots and put the whistles in their mouth so they go, <laughs> um, but that's a fun one to do. And it kind of blurs the line between uh, traditional sculpture and performance art. Um, another one that is often overlooked as an art form is uh, flash mobs. Flash mobs are, again, kind of a, a guerrilla art tactic where they kind of come out suddenly and unexpectedly, um, and it takes a lot of preparation time. Uh, a flash mob, for those unfamiliar, is a pre-choreographed routine. People will just kind of come out of nowhere and do a performance together and then disperse when it's over. And this particular um, example was, I'm not sure if this is a train station or an airport, but it is um, in transit employees in China at, at, a, at a transit hub. Um, Traditional sculpture or non-traditional sculpture in this specific instance can also be uh, street art. This is Mark Jenkins' work. 
and Mark Jenkins does a lot of uh, figural sculptures. Uh, a lot of them are done in clear tape, like this mermaid, um, and then installed for as long as they last. Some of his are done um, with what I guess could be described as scarecrows, stuffed clothes um, with the face obscured and put in weird positions. I've seen a couple of instances of his where it looks like a person is uh, pushing to support themselves across like a doorway and like they might fall on someone if they try to go through an alleyway or uh, all the figure but a head pushed up against the wall. So it looks like the, their head is uh, phased through the wall. Um, one of the more emerging uh, media that is being used uh, for street art is video projection. Um, there is a couple of French artists and a couple of Australian artists that are working on this that I've been able to identify. Um, this is typically a group project. The artist will design and create the image that they want projected and then they uh, recruit the help of um, projection engineers to map their image across a three-dimensional surface, which takes more effort than you would expect because you don't want your, vis your image to warp too much as it's going around curves and corners. Um, this specific uh, illustration is by Philippe Escherot, a French artist. Um, Escherot actually did a uh, exhibit, I guess, in Central Park a while back. Um, and projected portraits on the landscape of Central Park, on the trees and the bushes. Um, and that was very interesting. One of the fascinating th parts, uh, things about video projection as street art is that it is possibly even more temporary and uh, transient than some of the other media. Even, even a chalk, you kind of have to wait for it to wash away in one fashion or another. But the video projection are only lasts for as long as the artist is putting it out. Uh, they have their computers and their projectors set up with an electrical supply. And when they stop doing it, their art is gone. It is very low impact. Um, they can project on sides of buildings, they can project on trees, they could theoretically project on a cloudy sky. Um, their image and their art and their message, and when they are done, it's gone. Um, and I think that's pretty fascinating. Um, if this is something that you're interested in, we've put together a short book list. I have the link at the bottom of this slide. Um, you can also go to our website and search our catalog for BCAP Street Art. Um, some of these books are physical only and you will have to put them on hold, um, which should be happening soon if it is not yet already happening where you are in terms of uh, the library's reopening strategies. Some of these books are available as e-resource downloads, so you could check them out immediately on your devices. Um, and they kind of range in subject matter and difficulty level uh, across from picture books to uh, books in our adult art collection. Um, so going kind of uh, left to right, top and bottom, um, we have Jabaka Steptoe's biography of Jean-Michel Basquiat, Radiant Child, um, just kind of looking at the story of that artist um, who started as part of a street art collective and um, ended their career moving into uh, museums and galleries. Um, we also have Modern Art Adventures uh, by Pitamik and Laidlaw. This is kind of one of those idea technique books uh, it's 36 hands-on projects for kids to do with their families 
um, and they kind of look across the board from traditional art to pop art to street art. Um, and they say from Monet to Banksy. Um, then there's a book in the uh, adult collection called But Is It Art? Looking at Sturt Urban Street Art. It's by Wood. Um, this is in the adult collection, but kids are always welcome to um, check out books in that collection as long as it's fine with their parents um, or guardians. This book is taking a little bit closer look at some of the things that we talked about um, and furthering the discussion of what qualifies as art. Uh, then we have the picture book Hay Wall, which is uh, the story of a family going out and beautifying their neighborhood after hearing grandmother's stories about how the neighborhood used to be colorful and lively. Um, we also have Home Sweet Neighborhood, which is, it's by Mulder. It is about transforming city spaces and urban spaces into intentional, um, creative spaces and, and designating space in our neighborhoods for kids to express themselves through art and music and play. Um, and then we have Yellow Owl's Little Prince, which is also in the adult collection, but it is about making art with kids. Um, and this one is specifically focusing on stamps and stencils, which I thought tied in nicely to our discussion about those media. Um, and one more time, you can grab that link off the bottom of the slide. You can also search the catalog for BCAP Street Art to find this book list. So what's next? Um, if you are healthy enough and able to, I would strongly encourage you to put on your masks and go for a walk. Walk around your neighborhood, walk around the, the areas around where you live, and look for art. Can you find any examples of street art? Um, can you tell the difference between what might be street art and what might be public art? Would that matter? Um, what, what does that art say to you? What do you think it means? What is, what is the artist trying to say? Does it make a statement specific to your neighborhood or community or maybe to the larger New York or to the world as a whole. Um, once you've taken a look a little bit, um, start, start thinking about some things and putting your pencil to paper. If you have a sketchbook or a notebook, that's great. If you don't, scrap paper is fine. Just kind of start practicing drawing and, and making art and and expressing yourself there, and then ask permission. Talk to uh, the grown-ups that are responsible for you and um, talk about your ideas. If you want to go outside and make your art on the sidewalk or the side of your building, um, maybe have your grown-ups help you talk to your landlord or supervisor um, and talk about your idea. And then draw a mural in your neighborhood using sidewalk chalk. Um, it's temporary. It'll wash off. Uh, but it'll be a good way to kind of practice expressing yourself through art and letting other people see that. Um, things to consider while you're sketching and planning. What's important to you right now? What is, what is something you care about? And it can be anything. It can be how you feel about having been home from school since March. It can be how much you love Minecraft. It can be how much you love Marvel Comics. It can be that you're scared about something. It can be how you're proud about something. Just think about what are things that are important to you. There's no limit. Um, also, think about what's going on in your community that you feel passionate about. I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening right now, and some of it might be scary, and some of it might be exciting, and some of it might make us feel happy or sad. Um, but it also, it doesn't have to be a big issue if that's something that you don't want to deal with right now. You can um, 
you can be passionate about the new flavor of ice cream at your bodega. Um, I know I am. I always love it when I find my favorite flavor of ice cream, which is uh, fish food. Um, but just kind of think, what's, what is important to you? What might be important to other people? And how can you say that through art? Um, to give you some kind of starting points that aren't done by famous artists, um, I have this example. I did this project when I was in college. Uh, this was this was a three and a half person uh, endeavor. My friend and I came up with the idea um, and kind of led this project. She took a plaster cast of a third friend of ours. Um, using rigid wrap or what are known as plaster bandages and then brought the two halves of her cast into uh, our art studio. The cast maybe came from her, the bottom of her ribs to the top of her heads and included her arms and I assembled the two halves and I covered them in peat moss and tree bark and where her fingers didn't want to bend together I put branches with leaves and where the hole was for her hair at the top, I put another branch with some leaves and then another friend kind of helped hold the ladder while I climbed up in the tree and tied it down with a fishing line. There was a branch that had broken and left a hole. Um, it was kind of out of the way. It was on a sidewalk on the backside of my college campus. Um, a lot of theater students saw it. it wasn't sealed. It was just made out of plaster. So when it started to rain, she started to melt. Um, for us, this was uh, kind of looking at the relationship of humans and nature, but also the relationship between um, our community and folklore and mythology. Um, and creating a mythological figure of a dryad, a, a tree spirit. Um, when it started to melt, we took it down. Um, some people loved it, some people did not. Um, some people were kind of scared when they saw a human coming out of a tree. Um, but this is just one example. It, it was uh, a lot of effort and uh, took a lot of planning and cost us a little bit of money. It wasn't one of, it wasn't expensive, but it wasn't a, a really cheap project. Um, and then this project it was one that we did last summer, summer before at the Central Library, just outside the youth wing in our garden space. Um, kids and librarians used chalk and sand to, to make pictures on our sidewalk. Um, I think this is a peacock. So that's, that's another option for you too. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this talk. I hope you are thinking a little bit more about art um, and expressing yourself. And I'm excited to see what you create. I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon.